It is now time for question period. The Leader of Her Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Uh, speak, my question is for the Premier. Premier uh, Jerry Lawhey Jr., Chair of the Sudbury Police Services Board, told Mr. Olivier, quote, I come to you on behalf of the Premier, end of quote. And then he allegedly offered him a government job to step aside as a candidate. But in January, your spokeswoman said, quote, Jerry Lawheed is not government or Liberal Party staff. He speaks for himself, end of quote. Premier, given that Mr. Lawheed is not a government employee or a Liberal Party staffer, where did he get the authority to offer Mr. Olivier a job? Did you give it to him? Good question. Thank you, Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, as I have said repeatedly and as I said in a statement on Friday, um, we, uh, we reached out, I reached out to uh, Andrea Olivier, and, and just, to, just to remind the, uh, the member opposite, I didn't have to have a conversation with Andrea Olivier. I had a conversation with our past candidate because I wanted, I wanted to make sure that he understood that I knew it was a difficult moment, that he wasn't going to be the candidate in the Sudbury by-election, Mr. Speaker, and we wanted to find ways for him to stay involved. If that's what he chose to do, Mr. Speaker, we wanted to make some suggestions about ways that he could be involved in the same way, Mr. Speaker, that I hope that any leader would want to keep a past candidate involved in the party. Thank you. Supplementary. Again, to the uh, Premier, Mr. Speaker. Premier, the uh, official opposition, Andy, he directly mentioned Gary Lawheed's involvement in uh, Wingate 43 times during a question period last week. The government mentioned him only once. And Premier, since the Chief Electoral Officer's report was made public last Thursday, Mr. Lawhey Jr. has not been mentioned at all by your government. You've gone silent on Mr. Lawhey. So, Premier, you said Pat Sabera will step down if charges are laid. Will you ask Jerry Lawhey Jr. to do the same if charged? Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, um, as the member opposite well knows, Jerry Lawhey Jr. is not a member of my staff, Mr. Speaker. So um, I have, I have, and I do take this matter very, very seriously. I've said that repeatedly, Mr. Speaker. I, I understand that it is extremely important that when there are allegations, that we take them seriously, that we answer the questions, and that we are doing that, Mr. Speaker. But here Order. is the here is the fact, Mr. Speaker. I made a decision. I made a decision that we would have a candidate in the Sudbury by-election who was Glenn Tebow, Mr. Speaker. The past candidate was not going to be the candidate, and there was outreach to him to try to find a way for him to stay involved, Mr. Speaker. That is why I had a conversation with him. That is why Pat Cerbera, my staff member, had a conversation with him, Mr. Speaker, to see if there were ways that he might want to stay involved. As I said, I would expect that of any leader, Mr. Speaker, that they would want to keep past candidates involved in the party. Yeah. Again, to the uh, Premier, Premier Jerry Lawhey Jr. raised over $100,000 for your federal friend Justin Trudeau. But last week, a senior Trudeau staffer said that Mr. Lawhey Jr. would not be involved in the coming Deputy federal House election. Leader, order. Premier, clearly, the federal Liberals are willing and probably quite eager to cut this bad apple loose even after the mountain of money he raised for them. The member from Kitchener, Premier, Kitchener 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 come to order. Your leader is trying Lawhey to ask Jr. a question. Jr. resigned from the Sudbury Police Services Board. Do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Mr. Speaker, as we, uh, as we discussed last week, the uh, Sudbury Police Services Board. We don't direct the Sudbury Police Services Board, Mr. Speaker. Um, they will make uh, they will make their decisions. What we what we did was we uh, I made a decision that we would have a candidate in the Sudbury by-election who would be Glenn Tebow, who is a terrific candidate and is going to be a terrific MPP for Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. A strong voice for the community. Uh, we reached out to the past candidate to see if there were ways that he wanted to be involved, but that decision had already been made, Mr. Speaker. That a different a different candidate was going to be in place and that's a difficult moment as i said in my statement on friday i've been i've been a failed candidate mr speaker i i know that at a moment when you know that you're not going to be the candidate that can be a difficult moment that's why we made the outreach to see if there were ways that uh, uh, that the uh, that the past candidate wanted to be involved there were suggestions mr speaker that's exactly what we did and i would expect that of any leader thank you your question the member from Leeds Grenville uh, thanks speaker my question is uh, back to the premier uh, when this Premier came to office, she said she'd be different from the last guy. Yeah. However, the Premier has failed to hold herself to the high standard expected from her office. If charges are laid by the OPP, 
we expect that she'll step aside until they are resolved. And if a conviction is made, and if it is found or alleged the Premier directed Mr. S uh, Ms. Sorbera or Mr. Lougheed to have those conversations with Mr. Olivier, then Mr. the Premier the should resign. A dark cloud hangs over your office, Premier, with four OPP investigations. Premier, will you step aside if there are charges laid against Pat Sorbera or Jerry Lougheed? Thank you. Thank you, Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, it's it's a very interesting question coming hard on the heels of a uh, uh, report from Elections Ontario that actually exonerated me, uh, Mr. Speaker. wants to continue to stir this pot because the member opposite actually doesn't want to talk doesn't want to talk about the fact that we are making decisions that are going to strengthen this province. I was at the uh, Roma Ontario Good Roads Association this morning, Mr. Speaker, in a very good meeting with the executive, had conversations with folks in the halls about the investments that we're making in infrastructure, about the fact that we're working with them in partnership, Mr. Speaker, that they have concerns about asset management and about new revenue tools. Those are the things that they want to talk to us about, Mr. Speaker. I made it clear on Friday that if there are charges made, Mr. Speaker, then of course Pat Sabero will stand aside. Friday, Premier, you could have come in and, and announced that uh, Ms. Sorbera and Mr. Lougheed would step aside until the OPP investigation concluded. But, Premier, and I said this before, if you continue to stand by them, you, Premier, will eventually fall with both of them as well. Premier, you've spouted ludicrous explanations for your behaviour that fall well below the dignity that your office should hold. Put an end to this distraction you've created for your government and your caucus. Premier, answer the question, yes or no, did you instruct Pat Sorbera and Jerry Lougheed to make those calls to Andrew Olivier with options if he agreed to step aside? extremely clear that any suggestion that anything was offered in exchange for any action is false. I've said that over and over and over again. The fact is a decision had been made that Glenn Tebow would be our candidate in Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. That decision was made. The conversations with Andrew Olivier were about keeping him involved in the party. That's the fact, Mr. Speaker. I have said that repeatedly. I will continue to answer that question, Mr. Speaker, because that is what happened. And it is what I would expect of any leader that they would want to keep a past candidate involved, particularly at a time which is difficult when they were not going to be the candidate in the next election, Mr. Speaker, and that's the, that's the situation we were dealing with. That's why those conversations were held, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Final supplementary. Well, Speaker, again, back to the Premier. You know, Premier, something, something just doesn't add up between the call with Pat Cerbera and Mr. Olivier. You said there was a conversation that took place after you had already told the former Order. candidate about the fact that you were going to be appointing Mr. Tebow. Now, if that's true, why did your deputy chief of staff tell Mr. Olivier he would, quote, force the premier to move to the appointment process, unquote, if he didn't step aside? According to the chief electoral officer, that chat, chat, chat took place the day after you claim that you told Mr. Olivier of your decision. Premier, is the chief electoral officer's time frame correct, or have you forgotten when you instructed Pat Sorbera to make that call to Andrew Olivier? No, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Premier? The member opposite exact, is exactly correct. I had a conversation with Andrew Olivier. Pat Sorbera had a converse, conversation the next day. I had made it clear to uh, I made it clear to Andrew Olivier that I'd be appointing Tebow as the candidate, Mr. Speaker. The conversation Order. Pat Sorbera had with him was about how he might stay involved in the party if he chose to do so, Mr. Speaker. The member and, from Leeds, so, Granville, Mr. Speaker, Order. there's an investigation going on. In the meantime, I'm not going to force someone to resign in the face of allegations that I do not believe to be true, Mr. Speaker. 
Speaker. That actually would have been the easy thing to do as the as the member opposite continues to howl for a certain action, Mr. Speaker. That would have been easy to acquiesce. That's not what I'm going to do, Mr. Speaker. I am going to continue. Wrap up, please. I'm going to continue to do the work of government, Mr. Speaker, and I made it clear on Friday if there are charges laid, then Pat Sabara will step aside. Thank you. New question, the Leader of the Third Party. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. The OPP anti racket squad are investigating senior Liberals for their role in the Sudbury bribery scandal. And instead of apologizing or accepting responsibility, the Premier believes she's above the law. Court documents say the investigation hinges on, quote, the corrupt act of dealing in appointments. Somebody made the decision to engage in that corrupt act and offer Andrew Olivier a job so he could get out of the way. Who directed Mr. Lougheed and Ms. Sorbera to offer Andrew Olivier his choice of jobs, Speaker? Well, Mr. Speaker, as the leader of the third party knows, there was no commitment to an offer of anything for any action, Mr. Speaker. The leader of the, the, leader of the opposition knows that. In fact, in fact, I believe, Mr. Speaker, that uh, Andrew Olivier is on the, on the record saying there was no specific commitment in, in our yes, conversations, I Mr. Speaker. So the fact is that there was no offer for any specific action. That did not happen. What we did was we tried to work with a past candidate who was not going to be our candidate, and that's a hard thing to accept, but he was not to be our candidate, and we work to keep him involved. I hope, Mr. Speaker, that the leader of the third party is working with Mr. Cimino and the uh, and and Ms. Shabanquit to make sure that they are involved, Mr. Speaker, because those are those are people who have made a sacrifice. They've put their names on the ballot. My hope is that they are going to be able Answer. to be involved in the party if they choose to, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, when this premier learned that David Livingston was the subject of a police investigation, she rushed to say, and I quote, this is not the way a government should operate. This is not the way a premier's office should conduct itself, and it's not the way my office operates, unquote. But when her top aides are under investigation, the Premier is singing quite a different tune, Speaker. The Premier obviously thinks it's okay for her office, her Premier's office, her government to operate with top aides under investigation. So I ask the Premier again, who directed that Andrew Olivier— Minister of Economic Development, come to order. Premier. Mr. Speaker, I, I freely admit that I wanted to find ways, if, uh, if this young man wanted to stay involved in politics, wanted to stay involved in the party, I wanted to work with him and I wanted us to be able to provide suggestions because there are a lot of ways to be involved in politics short of being a candidate, Mr. Speaker. So that's what those conversations were about. And the leader of the third party knows full well that there have been many changes made in terms of the retention of documents, in terms of the training that we've provided on the advice of the Information Privacy Commissioner. There are many changes that have been made, Mr. Speaker, as a result of uh, actions that were taken in the past. So we are constantly working to make sure that we find ways to do government in a way that's open and transparent to the people of the province. That's that's exactly why, Mr. Speaker, I called Andrew yes, Olivier. Sir. I didn't have to call Andrew Olivier. I didn't have to call the past candidate, but I wanted to let him know that I understood this was Thank a you. difficult moment and if he wanted to be involved. Thank you. Final supplementary. Just over two years ago, the Premier made a commitment to Ontarian Speaker. <clears throat> Referring to a decade, a decade of Liberal scandals, she said, I quote, we must acknowledge our mistakes, take responsibility for them, and work together to guarantee that they are not repeated. Deputy House Leader, two years later, time. here we are, all over again, with an investigation into what I quote corrupt act of dealing in appointments and, quote, corruption between politically sophisticated parties. Will this Premier keep her word of two years ago to Ontarians, admit her mistakes, take responsibility, and tell the people of this uh, province who issued the order that Andrew Olivier should be offered what the OPP and Elections Ontario refer to Question. as a bribe? 
Mr. Speaker, let's, let's just be clear that uh, the leader of the third party is dealing in allegations at the moment. And the chief electoral officer said clearly last week, and I quote, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges, unquote, Mr. Speaker. So that's the moment that we're in right now. There are allegations and there's an investigation. And to the leader of the third party's question about whether I will continue to learn from uh, mistakes, Mr. Speaker. A, that's what I believe government is about, good government, when there are mistakes made or when there are issues that have to be dealt with. Of course we learn from them. And I also believe that's the human condition, Mr. Speaker, that you know, the, the, the way we go through life is we, we start something, we take action, and if it doesn't work, then we find a way to correct it, Mr. Speaker. That's how I function, that's how our party functions, and that's how we will continue to function. Mr. Speaker. New question, the leader of the third party. Mr. Speaker, my next question is also for the Premier. On Friday, the Premier claimed that she decided to appoint her candidate in November. Funny, because on December 11th, Jerry Lougheed said Lougheed called Andrew Olivier and said this, quote, the Premier up till now, December 11th, has always said to me she's in favour of a nomination race, so I want to make that really clear. She's never said to me I want to appoint him." Unquote. Premier, those are two very different versions of what happened. My question is, which one of them is actually the truth? Mr. Speaker, I had a meeting at the end of November with Glenn Tebow. I made a decision at that point to appoint Glenn Tebow, Mr. Speaker. I believed at that point, after my meeting with him, that he would be the best candidate for the Sudbury by-election, that he would be the best representative for Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. Everything that happened after that was about making sure that he became our candidate, Mr. Speaker. And if the past candidate wanted to stay involved, that he had the opportunity to do that. You know, Mr. Speaker, I understand the back and forth of question period. I do understand that. But I think accusing people of being criminals while an investigation is going on, I think that's wrong, Mr. Speaker. I do not think that's right. And so I reject the premise of the third leader, the leader of the third party's question. Seated, please. Supplementary. Now that her office is facing down federal prosecutors, the Premier is claiming that she told Andrew Olivier that she was going to make an appointment. Well, that's odd, Speaker, because on December 12th, after Andrew Olivier spoke to the Premier, he said to Pat Sorbera, quote, the Premier has to make her decision. Pat Sorbera didn't dispute that, Speaker. In fact, she said the Premier is, quote, going to have to make a decision around the appointment. Unquote. Once again, questions to the Premier Speaker. Two very different versions of what happened. Which one are we to believe? Which one are Ontarians to believe? Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Again, let me just be clear. In my conversation with Andrew Olivier, the whole reason I reached out to Andrew Olivier, Mr. Speaker, was that he was not going to be the candidate, that I had made a decision that I was going to appoint Glenn Tebow, and that I wanted to make sure that if Andrew Olivier wanted to stay involved, if he wanted to be uh, involved, that he would know what the options were, that he yeah. could uh, make a decision about how he might want to be involved. That's the conversation I had with, with our past candidate. That's the conversation Pat Cervera had with him the next day. And it, it was all within the framework of my having decided to appoint Glenn Tebow as the candidate in the Sudbury by-election, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Final supplementary. Well, Speaker, Ontarians are hearing two versions of the bribery scandal, and they both can't be true. There is a version where we hear three people on tape, a tape that was made long before there was a police investigation, Speaker, and in that version, the Premier hadn't made a decision about an appointment. In fact, Jerry Lougheed said, quote, I want to make that real Really clear. Mr. She's of never Education, said to come me order, that I want please. to appoint him. Unquote. And there's another version from the Premier herself, made under the hot lights of a. The Minister of Education, come to order, please, second time. And I would ask the member from Hamilton East Stony Creek to let me do my job. Carry on. I said a word. You never said anything. And, Speaker, there's another version from the Premier, made under the hot lights of a possible criminal charge, claiming that she made a decision about an appointment back in November. So I'm going to repeat again two different stories. I asked the Premier to come clean with the public and tell us which one is true.
Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I've done that, and I will do it again. I had a meeting with Glenn Tebow at the end of November. I made a decision, Mr. Speaker, that Glenn Tebow would be the best candidate for us in Sudbury. I made that decision, Mr. Speaker, and I didn't make that decision public. It's true. I didn't call the leader of the third party, and I didn't call the interim leader of the opposition. I didn't make a public statement about that, Mr. Speaker, but I had made that decision at the end of November once I had met Glenn Tebow. That decision was made, Mr. Speaker. The member for Renfrew, Nicholson, Pembroke. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. My question is also for the Premier. Premier, you held a press conference on Friday. The whole world was hoping that you would do the right thing. Instead, you doubled down on your sad response from the day before. Order. Premier, you had the chance to do the right thing. You had the opportunity to cut Pat Sabara and Jerry Lougheed loose, yep. at least until these investigations are complete. Yep. Instead, you chose to stand by them. According to the Chief Electoral Officer, they have broken the law. Yet, you continue to stand behind Sabara and Lougheed. Is it because you gave them direct orders to offer inducements to Andrew Olivier? Question. Premier, are you not, in fact, protecting them so that they'll protect you? Thank you. Premier, are you not, in fact, by extent? Uh, so Time's up. Premier. Uh, Mr. Speaker, well, again, let me just be clear what the uh, Chief Electoral Officer said last week. And I quote, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges. The investigations are entirely independent, Mr. Speaker. They are ongoing. Right now, we are dealing with allegations, Mr. Speaker. And in my statement on Friday, I made it clear that if there are charges, then, uh, then my staff member will step aside, Mr. Speaker. So uh, I made it very clear exactly why we had the conversations with our past candidate. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I will Will, I will continue to do the work of the government while those, uh, while those investigations are going on. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. Premier, you came to office saying you would hold the office to a higher standard. In your two years, you have failed every time you've been tested on that promise. You failed again last week. This is your chance for a retest. Stop protecting yourself. Minister of Economic by Development, second time. Lougheed and Sabara. Two years ago, you would say, said you would run things a new way when it came to ethics and accountability. Yeah, how's that work when now? it comes to ethics and accountability, now you're just running away. Speaker, or Premier, you've been caught in your own snare. Yep. Now it's time to come clean. Mm -hmm. Order the resignations of Sabara and Lougheed or consider your own. Excellent Thank you. question. Thank you. Issue of doing things differently. One of the things I said on uh, on Friday, and I and I used this example because I think it is a stark example of uh, of a change. Um, there have been uh, members of the opposition who have come forward and have asked for appointments from our government in exchange for in, in exchange for stepping down from their seats. Mr. And I'm not. I'm not suggesting. I'm not suggesting that this is the first time in history that this has ever happened. I know that there are lots of examples of this. But what's different, Mr. Speaker, is I said no on the advice of my staff and in, in consultation with my staff. We said no. We said no. We're not going to do that. We're not going to uh, proffer an appointment in exchange for uh, an opposition member stepping down from a seat. And that, Mr. Speaker, is an example. I was using that as an example of how things have changed and and how we are doing things differently, Mr. Speaker. No question. Member from Timmins, James Bay. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. The Premier's Deputy Chief of Staff and Campaign Director, Pat Sabera, is facing investigations for bribery under Section 96 of the Election Act. Will the Premier explain to Ontarians why Pat Sabera is working in the Premier's office when there's clearly evidence that she has broken the law? Isn't it time for Pat Sabera to go? Thank you, Premier. Yeah. Deputy Premier. Well, Speaker, it appears that hell hath no fury like a party scorned. Uh, Speaker, the Premier made a decision. She made a decision to appoint a candidate in Sudbury. 
The candidate she uh, supported for that nomination, Speaker, is a man very worthy of the kind of confidence invested in him by the Premier. Speaker. On this side of the House, we actually like to keep people engaged in the political process. We understand that there are many ways to serve, one being a candidate, but many other ways as well. So, having made the decision to appoint Glenn Tebow as the candidate, there were uh, reach, reaches out. People did reach out to say, how can you stay involved? There are many ways to stay involved. Speaker, that's the right way to do politics, Order. and I think the member opposite should actually take Answer. a lesson from the Premier on how to keep past party members engaged. Thank you. Supplementary. Staying involved doesn't mean you can break the Election Act. Exactly. Jerry Lougheed is the chair of the police, Sudbury Police Services Board. He's supposed to be part of the system that enforces the law. But Jerry Lougheed is facing investigation for bribery. There is evidence that he broke the law. Can the Premier explain to Ontarians why she thinks that Jerry Lougheed should still be the chair of the Sudbury Police Services Board? To the Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. Sir, Community and Safety. Thank you very much, Speaker. And I think the member opposite knows very well that the decision, uh, 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 the fact that uh, that Mr. Lougheed is the chair of the Sudbury Police Services Board is a decision of the Police Services Board. That's right. They, in fact, met uh, last week, uh, uh, Speaker, uh, and they looked. At the, they looked at the facts and they, and they voted uh, to keep uh, Mr. Lahid as the chair of the Police Services Board. So I think that's, that's where the accountability is, that's where the decision making is, and we should respect that decision. Adam Jim, thank you. New question, the member from uh, Milton. Halton. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Associate Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I know the Associate Minister has been working hard to build Ontario's new retirement pension plan. This is something that the people of Ontario need. The reality is that a significant number of Ontarians don't have an adequate workplace pension plan or are not saving enough for retirement. Mr. Speaker, after a lifetime of hard work, Ontarians deserve better. A number of Halton residents say they are pleased with our government taking steps to help Ontarians be financially secure when they retire. Younger families in my riding are concerned about their retirement security and that of their kids and grandkids. The Canada Pension Plan is just not enough. The minister and our government have committed to engaging with Ontarians on the ORPP. I know the minister has been crisscrossing the province to speak with Ontarians about our plan to enhance retirement security. Question. Mr. Speaker, can the minister please inform this House about what she is hearing from Ontarians about the thank ORPP? You. Associate Minister of Finance. Thank you, Speaker, and I want to thank the member from Halton for the question. The member is right. The Premier stressed the importance of consulting on the ORPP in my mandate letter. It has been informative to travel the province to meet with people to discuss the ORPP and hear their feedback. From Thunder Bay to Ottawa, Windsor to Peterborough, I've had the opportunity to meet with representatives from business, labour, associations and organizations, families and individuals. There were a diversity of opinions, but the common thread throughout these conversations was that people are concerned about their retirement security. People are concerned that they have not saved enough and or that they might outlive their savings. Several people also worried that they may never be able to retire. That's Mr. Right. Speaker, that is very troubling to our government. We believe that after a lifetime of working and contributing to the economy, Ontarians deserve a secure retirement. That's why we're moving forward with the Ontario Retirement Answer. Pension yeah, yeah. Plan. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you again to the Minister for her hard work and for that answer. I'm pleased to hear that the Minister has had the opportunity to get some solid input from many Ontarians on this very important initiative. And I know that Halton residents will appreciate the government's efforts to actively engage Ontario residents on this vital matter. Mr. Speaker, again, through you to the Associate Minister of Finance, our government has been actively advocating that the federal government needs to make a modest enhancement to CPP without success. As we move forward with the Ontario Retirement Pension Plan, some of my constituents have asked whether we are continuing to press for a CPP enhancement. Many say this would be the best way to ensure a secure retirement. Can the minister please inform the House about whether our government is still pursuing an enhancement Question. to CPP? Thank, Thank you. you. Minister. 
Thank you, Speaker, and thank you again to the hardworking member from Halton for this important question. Our preferred option to address retirement security remains CPP enhancement. The Premier and Minister of Finance have been advocating for CPP enhancement since 2010. Over a year ago, having extensive discussions with the provinces and territories, there was agreement to continue moving forward with discussions on CPP enhancement. Unfortunately, the federal government unilaterally shut down any and all further discussions on this issue. We know that Ontarians expect their government to take leadership to help secure their retirement. We also know that we cannot wait for another government to take action on this important issue. That is why we're moving forward with a Made in Ontario solution with the ORPP so that we can strengthen retirement security for Ontarians. As a participant, a small business owner in Markham said, Answer. When we share a little, we gain a lot. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. New question, the member from Dufferin Caledon. Speaker, my question is to the Attorney General. Minister, last week's very disturbing report released by the Chief Electoral Officer on apparent contributions, contraventions of the Election Act is, in his own words, unprecedented. As AG, you have a unique responsibility to advise Cabinet on legal matters. Have you advised the Premier that, according to the Election Act, a specific job offer is, in fact, not required for an apparent contravention to have occurred? Mr. Speaker, I'm going to repeat again. You know, like, uh, the, Quite legitimate. the Chief Electoral Officer Nothing is an independent it. officer, we know Nothing that, of the le no. Legislative Assembly. And as I mentioned previously on numerous away, occasions, this process exclusively involved non-partisan officials within the Ministry Nothing of the Attorney General. The system is already designed, and uh, I think the, the, uh, the Chief Electoral Officer stipulated it at page four of his report. The system is already designed so that only non-partisan officials handle any complaints. And the third party and the opposition knows that, and uh, if they want to Actually have uh, to more uh, information, you know, they can reach out to the chief electoral officer, and he will explain the process. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. And in page 10 of the report, it very specifically says an apparent contribution could be established if a candidate is offered a range of options rather than a specific role in a specific office. Sound familiar, Premier? Minister, what, what assurances can you give the public that this investigation will be dealt with quickly before memories fail and evidence is deleted? Thank you. Start the clock. The uh, member from Renfrew, come to order, please. Second time. The member from Nipissing, please come to order second time. <laughs> Attorney General. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to repeat it again. You know, the system is already designed so that only non-partisan officials handle this, uh, this complaint. And uh, as I said last week, the matter has been uh, referred to the Public Prosecution Service of Canada by, uh, by uh, the ministry. And uh, the uh, member should know the process because the chief electoral officer said in his report uh, that his office briefed from the Duffer opposition come to order. about the independent process. So I guess that the, the, these questions should not be asked if they have read the report. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. New question, member for Bramley Gore Malton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the premier. Has the premier or her staff? ever offered jobs or appointments in order to keep anyone else from running? Mr. Speaker, I've answered this question uh, many times in reference to the, uh, the Sudbury situation. Mr. Speaker, uh, there was no uh, offer made for uh, any action. Mr. Speaker, we've been very clear about that. Uh, hasn't been hasn't been done in the Sudbury situation, and hasn't been done elsewhere. Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The premier seems to think that everyone is going around and doing these type of activities. This is a very commonplace. It may be standard in her party. It's certainly not standard in ours. Pat Sabera called Andrew Olivia, and she said this to Andrew, and I— Order. Stop the clock, please. Order. 
Please put your question. Thank you. Pat Sabira said this to Andrew, quote, you're like the third person I've ever heard her ask this of. Why this, why, that's why she said, I hope we're standing together and we need to find the longer term role here, not in Glen Shadow, but in your own voice. We're from Beaches, because, East York, and she continued to say, if there were other things that Olivia was particularly interested in that are within the Premier's realm to make Olivia part of, then she is more than prepared to do that. Who are the other two people that the Premier has made a call to, and what kind of offers did she make to them that were within her realm? Thank you, Premier. Mr. Speaker, I really, I, I really don't know where this question is going. I've been very clear, Mr. Speaker, that the, the conversations with our past candidate were about suggestions of ways that he might want to stay involved, Mr. Speaker. You know, there are many ways to be involved. There are many options, and that was, uh, that was the conversation that I had had with Andrew Olivier. That's the conversation that Pat Cerbera had with him, Mr. Speaker, and I know, I know that those are conversations that have been had by, uh, by uh, other parties. I know that, you know, Jonah Shine and Paul Ferreira both, Mr. Mr. Speaker, yeah. had yeah, ways of staying involved yeah. in the party, and of course it was after an election. I understand it was after an election, but the fact is people stay involved in parties. That was the conversation that uh, I had with Andrew Libby, and that's the conversation that Pat Cerbera had with him. Thank you. New question. The member from Etobicoke North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Labour, Kevin Flynn. Global Economic Marketplace. Speaker, as you'll appreciate, the economy of Ontario, in order to be globally competitive, must always deal with the evolving challenges and the constant changes that are before us. In today's workplace, for example, many people are often not keeping the traditional 9 to 5 business day and, for example, taking weekends off. In my own riding of Etobicoke North, I hear stories about families who are, for example, affected by these, a number of these different changes that, of course, affect their life, their personal economy, their home situation, and of course their workplace. From globalization to the aging workforce, people in this province want to know that we as a government, in our capacity as stewards of the economy, are in fact doing uh, planning for what's in store. Speaker, my question is this. Can the minister please explain Marshall. what is our government doing to ensure that Ontario's labour laws adapt to the ever-changing marketplace? Thank you. Minister of Labour. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the, uh, the Honourable Member from Etobicoke North for what I think is a very insightful question. As the Member will know, and all members of the House will know, we, uh, all, all the members of Cabinet receive public mandate letters. In my mandate letter, Speaker, I was asked to undertake a review of Ontario's changing workplace to ensure that the labour laws we have and the employment standards we have actually meet the needs of our modern economy. So starting very shortly, uh, Speaker, in March, public consultations are going to begin. They're going to look at the Labour Relations Act, the Employment Standards Act, and we want to know how they could be amended in order to meet the challenges of the changing workplace. We'll be looking in the, the increase of non-standard working relationships, the rise in prominence of the service sector, the impact of new, tech, uh, of new technology, Speaker. Answer. These special advisors that I've appointed will report back with recommendations within the next 18 months. Thank you, Thank Speaker. You. Thank you, Minister. Uh, I appreciate the steps, initiatives and programs the government's undertaking to tackle this particular issue, uh, especially as we go forward in this uh, challenging global marketplace. Minister, you mentioned that the review will be undertaken by a number of advisors and an expert panel who will, uh, I believe, be charged with reporting back to this particular to the House in 18 months. And I presume that their recommendations will help inform what changes may be required to employment standards, labour relations, and a number of other aspects in uh, the labour labour domain. Speaker, can you please, uh, through you to the minister, can you please tell this House who the advisors will be and an, a little bit about their vision for how they'll guide this important review of Ontario's changing marketplace? Thank you, Minister of Labour. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you to uh, the member for the supplementary. Speaker, I'm really pleased with the choice we've made here. We've appointed two special advisors, Michael Mitchell and the, the Honourable John C. Murray. They're going to lead and they're going to coordinate these upcoming public consultations and the, the uh, review itself. These people have a depth of relevant legal knowledge and experience that I think is unmatched in the province of Ontario. Michael Mitchell is a former senior partner at SAC Gold, Goldblatt Mitchell. Um, his 37 years in practice have given him a wealth of experience in the field. He's even co-authored a textbook on the Ontario Labour Relations Board. 
The Honourable John C. Murray has been practicing law since 1969, appointed to the bench of the Superior Court in 2004, provided legal advice to numerous public institutions, universities and hospitals. He's a pioneer of alternative dispute resolution. Uh, resolution. He's well prepared to face the challenge of this review. Yeah. Speaker, we should be especially proud of the opportunity to undertake this review with these two fine individuals. Yes, I would urge all members of the House to both become involved themselves and to urge the constituents to get involved yeah. as well. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. Premier, there is a sad irony in what has transpired since last Thursday in question period. You in the, formed the House last Thursday, as we all learned about the contraventions of the Election Act by your staff, that you would take time to consider and deliberate about the report before you respond. I was hoping for, an, for honesty, a quality that you preach constantly, but as I left astonished on Friday. Instead of speaking honestly, you impugned and maligned the reputation of every member in this House with an unwarranted attack. Premier, it's telling that no one trusts you. Even your candidates bring tape recorders to their meetings with you because they all Question. know you say one thing and you do another. Premier, why should anyone trust you about anything? Especially after what has Thank taken you. place in Sudbury and your involvement. Thank you, Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, um, I, <laughs> the, I, I really do challenge the premise of the question, but I, uh, I want to just I want to just say to the member opposite that I, I spoke in the legislature on Thursday. That's exactly right. I answered questions, and uh, I got a lot of advice, and I, I thought long and hard about uh, what I was going to say on Friday, Mr. Speaker, and at 4 o'clock in the morning I got up and actually wrote the statement that I made on Friday because I wanted, I wanted the people of Ontario to know exactly where I was coming from in this, Mr. Speaker, why I was doing what I was doing, why I had done what I had done. And, you know, I, I, did, include, I did include in my statement the fact that there have been actions taken by other parties, like members coming across the floor to ask for appointments in exchange for stepping down from their seats, and I made that point, Mr. Yes, Speaker, sir. because I needed the people of Ontario to understand that we said no. We said we're not going to do that. We're not going to operate like that, Mr. Speaker, even though that is what has been done before. That's why. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, Premier, you continue to malign and impugn members in this House. If that's a fact, come forward, come clean, tell us who they are. Premier, you challenge the premise to my question. I'm challenging your integrity. You have stood in this House and have said one thing after another, and they've all borne out to be false, each and every time. And with each falsehood, we have another OPP investigation. Premier, I'm drawing the line on that. Withdraw, please. I withdraw. Just think carefully. Premier, Four investigations now. Every time you say one thing, you do another. You have evidence. There's clear, clear evidence of your involvement here, and you Question. need to come clean with the people of Ontario. And you can't continue to impugn the members in this house in your defence of Thank your you. actions. Thank you. Thank you. Premier. So, Mr. Speaker, let's just be clear what the Chief Electoral Officer said once again. Uh, the Chief Electoral Officer stated, and I quote, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively pr for prosecutors and judges, unquote. So that's, that's yeah. the fact. We're dealing with allegations, Mr. Speaker. And let me just say to the member opposite, unlike the way he might do business, Mr. Speaker, I was making a point in my statement on Friday. I wasn't creating a situation where individuals names were going to be dragged through the mud. That's not what I was doing, Mr. Speaker. I was making a point. The fact 
fact is that this is something that has happened in the past and it has happened in the recent past, Mr. Speaker. It's not about going after an individual. That It really is not what it was about, Mr. Speaker. I was trying to put in context the fact that we are doing things answer. differently, Mr. Speaker. We said no in those situations when in the past the answer has been yes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. New question, the member from Nickelback. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. The Premier is protecting Pat Sorbara because the Premier insists Mrs. Sorbara was offering what the OPP is calling bribes on the Liberal clock instead of the government clock. It's the government's job to make laws, not to break them. And moonlighting in another position doesn't give you an excuse to start violating fundamental principle. A bribe is a bribe no matter whose time card you're punching. It's not a what happened in Vegas stays in Vegas type of a situation. <laughs> Premier, Speaker, does the Premier really think that it is okay for senior staff to be on the job while they are under criminal investigation? Because frankly, Speaker, Ontarians don't. Deputy Premier. Deputy Premier. Speaker, this um, story is not uh, that complicated. The story is there was a seat vacated five months after the election in Sudbury. An, an NDP MP decided that he wanted to run for the Ontario Liberal Party in Sudbury. Yeah. He had conversations with the Premier. The Premier was enormously impressed, as well she should be, and made the determination that Glenn Tebow would be our candidate in the upcoming by-election. After that decision had been made, there were um, conversations with the member from Stormont come to order. About how to keep him involved, Speaker? But let's just think about who Glenn Tebow is and why the Premier would choose to actually appoint him uh, as our candidate to make sure that he would come to Queens Park and represent. He has fought tirelessly Answer. for the most vulnerable people in Sudbury, people with disabilities, people with autism. But, uh, he's, uh, he's worked with the uh, big brothers, big sisters. Thank you. Speaker. Thank, you. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. Back to the Premier. My, my question is about Pat Sorbera offered Olivier, Andrew Olivier, a full-time or a part-time job at a constituency office or appointment to board or commission. It doesn't Minister matter that Children Mrs. Sobera was come working. To order. It was wrong. It is spelled out in the Criminal Code and in the Election Act. It is wrong. But the Premier says the role that Pat Sorbera plays as a director of campaign is quite separate from her role as Deputy Chief of Staff. Why is the Premier okay with Pat Sorbera offering what OPP is calling a bribe with her campaign director hat on? If she thinks it is wrong to offer bribes with her chief of staff hat on. Yeah. Deputy Premier. Uh, Speaker, you know, I've known the Premier since we were both elected back in 2003. She is a woman of enormous integrity. She is a woman who is thoughtful, who is critical, who will sometimes do the difficult thing when it's the right thing. In this case, she has chosen a difficult path. The easy path would be to just throw people under the bus. She has chosen not to do that. She has chosen to actually let the investigation unfold. She has chosen to uh, cooperate fully with any investigation, Speaker. She has chosen the right, the principled, the thoughtful path. And I have even more respect for her than I had before, Speaker, because she has chosen to do the difficult but right thing and has Answer. rejected the easy path. Thank you. New question? The member from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And my question is for the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs and may I add a fine MPP. This government has demonstrated its commitment to invest in people, to invest in infrastructure, and to support an innovative business climate in Ontario. Despite the government's efforts to support economic development through Main Street programs and services, Aboriginal people continue to face significant economic disadvantages. 
Our province's diversity is one of the greatest aspects, and my riding of Davenport is truly emblematic of Ontario's rich cultural diversity. As a society largely made up of immigrants, it is imperative that we recognize the contributions of Ontario's First Nations peoples to our province's diversity. We all recognize that a strong and vibrant Aboriginal community strengthens Ontario culturally, socially, and economically. Speaker, through you to the Minister, while we are making progress in many areas, can the Minister inform the House Question. about some initiatives this government has undertaken to better cater to the needs of Aboriginal communities and organizations across the province? Minister of Aboriginal Affairs. Thank you. Speaker, Speaker, the member is correct. Mainstream programs often fall short in delivering the necessary programs to our most vulnerable populations. We've been active on many fronts, creating many opportunities for both the private sector and communities to participate in a meaningful way and to help the Ontario economy. Just last week, we announced the continuation of our new relationship fund. The fund is designed to support Aboriginal communities and organizations, participation in meaningful consultation and engagement with government and the private sector. Ontario has invested $97 million in the new relationship fund between 2008 and 2014. And we are glad, we are happy that the Aboriginal communities are benefiting from this program in their relationship with the rest of Ontario and the development of their communities. Thank you. Minister, thank you for informing this House on the new Relationship Fund and is wonderful news. And This is a great investment in helping people, communities and businesses and helping to create a more robust business environment. However, the fact remains that the unemployment rate for the First Nation people is approximately three times the Ontario average on reserve and twice the Ontario average off reserve. We know that a constructive, cooperative relationship with Aboriginal peoples in Ontario leads to improve opportunities and a better future, not only for Aboriginal people, but for all people living in Ontario. Through you, Speaker, will the Minister expand further on just what is happening with this investment and how it is directly benefiting Aboriginal communities in Ontario? Thank you. Minister. Speaker, we want to see the gap between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people closed off because when Aboriginal people prosper, all Ontario prospers. The fund was originally announced as a four-year commitment in 2008. But it has been so successful that we will continue to invest in the fund on an ongoing basis. During the 2014-15 year, Aboriginal communities and organizations pursued a number of projects through the program funding. With a $14.5 million investment this year, the ministry has funded over 103 core consultation projects, representing 154 communities. And 30 enhanced consultation projects representing some 51 Aboriginal communities and organizations. This project will continue to show that Aboriginal communities are pursuing innovative solutions that ensure their future prosperity and the future of prosperity. Speaker, I commend that. We should all Thank commend you. that. Uh, thank you, Speaker. My uh, question is to the Premier. Uh, it's clear that your party is willing to rule verdict of innocence without trial. You continually tell the people of Ontario that you and your staff did nothing wrong, as if being elected Premier made you both judge and jury for your unscrupulous actions. After several complaints from the uh, public, the Greater Sudbury Police Board decided in a closed-door meeting that Gary Lahey Jr would continue as chair despite the investigations. You know, Premier, I was listening to this morning's opening prayer that referenced honesty and integrity. Premier, this investigation is not going to disappear. Why won't you ask this man to step aside while under investigation? Minister for Community Safety and Corrections. Thank you very much, Speaker. As I've, uh, as I've mentioned, uh, I've stated on, on numerous occasions, uh, Speaker, police services boards are responsible for the provision of adequate and effective policing within their municipality. Among their duties, uh, Speaker, police services boards generally determine objectives and priorities with respect to police services in their jurisdiction and establish policies for the effective management of the police services. Speaker, under the Police Services Act, the Minister of the Community Safety and Correction Services have no jurisdiction or power uh, to remove a member from the Police Services uh, Board. All Police Services Board members, however, Speaker, 
are appointed by the province or municipal council and are subject to a code of conduct that is enshrined under the Police Services Act through the uh, through uh, through a regulation. Speaker, I understand, as the member uh, mentioned, that uh, their board considered this matter itself and have decided to, to elect Mr. Uh, Lahi as the chair of the board. Supplementary. Uh, thanks, Speaker. Again, back to the Premier. Premier, what does your government have against accountability? You questioned the integrity of the Auditor General. You have brushed off the report from the Chief Electoral Officer. And it doesn't seem to concern you that there are four ongoing OPP investigations into your government's unethical political practice. These are all independent accountability officers who are saying that you and your government have done wrong. More reports, Premier, are on their way. Premier, everyone is telling you that you have done wrong. So when will you do the right thing, Premier, and have Mr. Lougheed step aside? Thank you. Minister. Uh, speaker, uh, the fair and the most accountable thing to do would be to let an independent body, which is responsible for review these matters, conduct its business, as opposed to raising these issues in the House and asking for some sort of political of interference, which the opposition is doing. As I mentioned, Speaker, there is a code of conduct uh, which is uh, in, in force uh, by regulation. Uh, it's Regulation 421-97, just for members' reference, if he wants to check. It, and it's up to Speaker, uh, up to the Ontario Civilian Police Commission, the OCPC, uh, to consider whether the, the code of conduct is being complied with or not. If the, if it, that's it's a, that's an independent speaker body, an arms length body. It is up to them to uh, to see whether uh, yes, the code of conduct is enforced. And I will leave that work up to OCPC as opposed to political interference that is being sought by the members opposite. Thank you. The member from Crawford. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. One of the Premier's top aides is under criminal investigation. And my constituents think that's pretty serious. So does the OPP and Elections Ontario and Federal Crown prosecutors. And where I come from, when someone is accused of something and they're in a public position, like one of the most powerful non-elected positions in this province, when they're under investigation, where I come from, they step down until the investigation is over. But why? What does it take for the Premier of this province to do actually what in most places would be normal practice and have that person step down until the investigation is over. Deputy Premier. Deputy Premier. Well, Speaker, again, let's go back to what's actually happening here. What's happening is that uh, the Chief elect Electoral Officer has, uh, has called the allegations against two people baseless. The Premier and uh, Mr. Thibault, those allegations have been uh, considered baseless. There are other two other investigations going on, Speaker, and and this uh, we are fully cooperating with these investigations. I think if uh, when a, when an allegation is made, Speaker, that does not make it true. Anyone listening today would think that there had already been a conviction. For heaven's sake, there is an investigation underway. F we're fully cooperating with the investigation. The premier has said, if in fact a charge is laid, then that changes the story. But Answer. I think, Speaker, that uh, uh, what's important is that there's an investigation underway, and uh, we are completely uh, cooperating with that investigation. Supplementary. Once again, to the Premier. The Premier has refused to accept any responsibility for her actions in this matter. She's protecting Pat Sorberry and Jerry Lougheed from this scandal. And the Premier apparently doesn't see any problems with Andrew Olivier being offered a job to get out of the way, even though the law is clear. But for my constituents, the issue is, the biggest issue is, we need to be held to a higher standard. The people who are involved in this investigation need to step back so the investigation appears to be open and transparent, the words we hear all the time from your government. Again, why don't you take normal practice, force these people to step aside until the investigation is complete. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Speaker. And you know, um, the Premier has received uh, lots of advice on this, and I think the, both po opposition parties have been very generous in their advice. Uh, that uh, that uh, advice has been heard. You heard from the Premier today that she did take that advice seriously, and then she really thought through the issues here. She, she took a thoughtful, principled, ethical approach. She made the determination that when allegations are baseless, as she knows them to be, she will, uh, she will let that investigation unfold, but she will not force the resignation of someone when the allegations against that person are baseless, Speaker. So I actually think our Premier has demonstrated a new and different and better way, Answer. not an easier way, but a better way of dealing with opposition allegations, Speaker. No question. The member from Kitchener State. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Citizenship, Immigration and International Trade. Uh, Minister, both Ontario's culture and its economy rely greatly on our immigrant population. Each year, we welcome many highly skilled newcomers who bring with them a wealth of knowledge and abilities that do contribute to our province. Without immigration, Ontario's working age population will begin to decline. There are many talented newcomers in my riding of Kitchener Centre who do contribute greatly to our community, and we want to make certain that they continue to be welcomed in our province and do meet with opportunities. Speaker, could the minister please tell us what actions is the government taking to ensure that Ontario continues to have a healthy immigrant population. Thank you, Minister of Citizenship, Immigration and International Trade. Speaker, thank you very much for the question. I want to thank the honourable member from Kitchener Centre for asking. Speaker, as an immigrant myself, just like many of my colleagues here today, yeah. I know the struggles that many newcomers face. Speaker, Ontario was built by immigrants. Our government is committed to making sure that they continue to find success in our great promise. This is why, Speaker, we recently reintroduced Bill 49, the Ontario Immigration Act. We passed. It would make Ontario the second province in the country after Quebec to have its own immigrant legislation. Yeah. 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 Speaker, Bill 49 will be in place the tools and authority needed to welcome immigrants that will help Ontario meet its future labour and market needs. Thank you. Answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. The member from Lanark, Frontenac, Lennox and Addington. On a point of order, Speaker. Point of order. Speaker, I'd like to draw your attention to Standing Order 23H and I. The Premier's comments today in this House in response to my question, as well as her comments yeah, last Friday, are count them out, and they are making allegations against another member and imputes false or unavowed motives to another member. And, Speaker, I would say to all members, I would like you to... Okay, thank you. I, uh, I was listening carefully all the time. I did not hear that, and I thank the member for his interjection. The uh, member from Bramley Gore Moulton on a point of order. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the indulgence. Uh, I'd love to introduce today Page Captain Daria Butt and his family, uh, Mother Mamta, Father Amish, Grandmother Bina, and Grandfather Nilesh. Uh, I want them all to be uh, welcomed in the house today. Thank, Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. There being no deferred votes, this house stands at recess until 1 p.m. this afternoon.